with methadone. Um, speaking of the pharmacology that supports the use of, of methadone, we, we really tend to reserve methadone for the more refractory pain patients. It's an agent that has a lot of pharmacokinetic variability. And so because it has a lot of pharmacokinetic variability, it really is left to the folks who understand how to use it and who are very skilled at using it. So it, it's really a, it can be very effective in folks who don't have refractory pain just out, right out the gate, but because there's not a, that many providers that can manage it well and not everybody's educated in using it, we want to make sure that the specialists, you know, those patients are referred to the specialists. So we tend to use it for more later line as an option when trying other things first. Um, but it really can be very effective in patients who have high opiate requirements, in patients who have neuropathic pain, um, and just about any patient who has pain, it's long acting, so it comes as a liquid, you know, it can be crushed if people can't swallow pills, so I do um, palliative care, so we use a good amount of methadone because people do have more issues with how they get the medications into patients, so uh, we can get it in other routes, which is nice. So pharmacologically, because it has other mechanisms of action different than the general opiates like the oxycontins and the um, morphines and such, it's it has a different, a little bit of a different place because it can target pain a little differently. Um, and when I say that, mostly through the NMDA receptor is what I'm talking about. And so then that kind of leads me nicely into the NMDA receptor because ketamine targets the NMDA receptor. So pharmacologically, that um, has really become more more recently, something that people have really been talking about and using more in in all different kinds of pain, but the data supports a lot around post-operative pain, a lot around neuropathic pain, um, opiate-induced hyperalgesia, because of that NMDA receptor, which is a central mechanism behind all of those different uh, states I just mentioned, that by targeting that, we found that we can decrease the opiate requirements. We can generally make um, patients' pain better, and the adverse effects of ketamine that we think about aren't as significant because the doses are very low. So um, it's reserved also kind of more for later on because it is, again, left to people who have a little more experience, who have a little uh, more uh, expertise with using that agent because it can have those other adverse effects like the emergence reactions that we think about. And then finally, the lidocaine, I think we generally try to leave that uh, to the anesthesiologists, the folks who have a little more experience or with it because it can have a lot more adverse effects at the you know at higher doses that can cause very severe adverse effects, cardiac adverse effects. Um, but pharmacologically, it's again, it's used mostly for neuropathic pain. A lot of the data is around neuropathic pain. And um, the infusions are much lower than the doses that are required when people use it for cardiac reasons. Um, but if you're not monitoring carefully and you're not used or accustomed to using this agent, then you may not, you may end up in an area that's not necessarily safe. So it's um, important to have protocols and things around that for use, but it has some data more in the neuropathic um, region.